talk a lot on this channel about the pitfalls of being a Turo host and some of the risks that you should be aware of if you're someone who's wanting to start or scale a Turo fleet. Damage claims, stolen cars, total losses, wear and tear, depreciation. All of these are absolutely valid concerns and things that you should be aware of if you are someone who is wanting to pursue Turo. But one risk that I haven't really belabored to the same degree as these other risks is recalls. And this has become a real problem with many hosts throughout the entire country. Recalls are a very real concern, and unfortunately, this is a concern that is almost entirely out of the hands of the Turo host and car owner. But this is specifically a major problem, not just with normal standard recalls, but with recalls with no remedy. Let me explain. We all know what recalls are. An automaker issues a recall, you take your car to the dealership, get it fixed at no cost, and you move on. No big deal. And with some people, if you're driving the car for personal use, many car owners will just opt out of getting a recall fixed altogether. In fact, studies show that between 25 and 30% of recalls never get fixed. But if you're a Turo host, the option of not getting a recall fixed isn't an option at all because you can't rent out cars with open recalls on Turo. And this isn't even a Turo requirement, this is a rental car requirement and it's outlined in a bill that was passed by Congress many, many years ago. And I believe that this bill was inspired by two women that were killed in a car accident that was ultimately caused by an open recall call on a rental car that they had purchased or rented. Now, if you're a Turo host, the process of getting a recall addressed is fairly similar to if you're driving a car for personal use, but there are a few additional steps that do make this entire process a bit more inconvenient. And this is most likely because of the fact that the car is actively being rented and it's making you money. And so whenever there's an open recall, it kind of throws a wrench into those plans. Once a recall is issued on a car, your car is going to get enlisted. When your car gets enlisted, it means that nobody can rent your car and your car is no longer showing up in Turo search results. So once it happens, you'll need to make sure to get the car back into your possession. You'll need to take the car to the dealership to get the recall addressed. And then you get the car back, submit proof to Turo that the repair was done, and then you can return to business as usual. And depending on the dealership, your vehicle, and where you're located, it can take anywhere between a couple of hours to a couple of days to get a recall addressed. This is for sure a pain in the butt, but it absolutely isn't the end of the world. And truthfully, if you're a Turo host, this is just part of doing business, part of being a car owner. But in recent years, recalls have become more of a problem, not only because of the fact that we're seeing more recalls across the automotive industry than we have in years past, but recalls become a particularly difficult issue for Turo hosts whenever it comes to recalls with no remedy, which is whenever an automaker issues a recall for a vehicle, but they actually don't have a fix for that recall to be addressed. One of the most famous examples of a recall with no remedy is the Takata airbag recall. This was a recall where airbags would explode in vehicles, resulting in serious injury or in some cases death. This recall was issued long before the fix was available, meaning that cars sat for, in some cases, years with open recalls before a recall could be addressed. This is also a very famous example because it was such an extreme recall and it affected literally millions and millions of cars. I remember whenever the Takata airbag recall was in the midst of its peak, and I had a car on Turo at the time that was affected by this recall, and I ultimately ended up selling that car because of the fact that Turo enlisted it, and between the time that I found out about the recall to the time that it was estimated that the recall would be addressed in a remedy would be available, it was almost a year's time. But within the last year, I was affected by this for a second time with three different vehicles at the exact same time. My Hyundai Sonata Hybrid, Kia Rio, and Hyundai Tucson. These cars sat unrented for six months because of a Hyundai ABS recall that didn't have a remedy for over six months. But at any given time, there are tons of vehicles throughout the entire car market that are affected by recalls with no remedy. And when this happens, Turo hosts can't rent their cars. And the thing that is most frustrating about this experience is that in many cases, you don't really know when a remedy is going to become available. It could be 30 days, it could be 60 days, it could be six months, it could be a year. You don't really know. And dealerships and automakers aren't super eager to give you a clear timeline. So let's say, for example, you buy a brand new 2024 car, you rent it out on Turo for a short period of time, and then a recall no remedy hits that vehicle. Well, this is very literally a worst case scenario for a Turo host, because at this point in time, you can no longer rent this 2024 car to make money off of it and to pay the car note. But if it's a brand new vehicle, Vehicle, you also most likely can't sell that car because you're probably underwater on that vehicle. And this means that you as a Turo host, you're in a bad spot. And it's just a bad situation overall. Now, unfortunately, whenever it comes to recall no remedy, there are only so many things that we as Turo hosts can do to protect ourselves because ultimately recalls aren't in the hands of a Turo host or a car owner. And when it comes to renting out a car with no remedy, there really is no way around it. You just can't do it. But here are some best practices that you can use in order to protect yourself as much as possible in this type of situation.
option. First and most importantly, you'll want to make sure that any car that you're buying for Turo doesn't have an open recall with no remedy. This is incredibly important and it's a very easy step to check off your list. Anytime we buy a car, regardless of the make, model, or trim, we always call the local dealership service department to confirm that there are no open recalls with no remedies for this vehicle. Dealerships can very easily give you this information and all you'll need in order to get it is the VIN for the car. Now it is important to note that a recall on its own isn't a reason to not buy a specific car for Turo. Recalls happen all the time and a lot of recalls have remedies available that you can easily get them addressed and fixed. Where this specifically becomes an issue again is with recalls with no remedies. For example, we just bought this Hyundai Tucson with an open recall and right when we bought it we got the recall fixed and it was good to go. Not an issue at all and if anything sometimes a recall can be a good way to negotiate a little bit off of the price because of the inconvenience associated with getting that recall fixed. But if you buy a vehicle with a recall with no remedy available that's whenever you're out of luck. So the first step with any car that you buy is to call a local dealership giving them the VIN and confirm that there are no open recalls and if there is an open recall confirm that it isn't a no remedy recall. The next thing that you can do to at least protect yourself if you're put in this type of situation is to buy cars that are below market value. Recall no remedies put you in a situation where you're not able to rent the car that you own but you don't want to be put in a position where you're not able to sell the car you own either because you own too much money on it or because you bought the car at a premium price. By buying a car for a discount you create a safety net between how much you paid for a car, how much it's worth, and what you can sell it for. And the third piece of advice I have and in general I would say best practice is to have a game plan in place for what you'll do if a vehicle that you own is affected by a recall with no remedy. For example, whenever this happened to us most recently with three of our cars, we just kept our cars sitting for six months, which was a huge bummer, but it was what it was. We actually had these three cars for six months, one parked in front of my sister's house, one parked in front of my dad's house, and one parked in front of my house because we didn't know what else to do with them. And once the recall remedies were available, we were basically the first one in line to get our car fixed. Now we can have our cars sit for six months or even a year at a time because of the fact that we don't have a car payment on our cars. And so we can afford to have our cars sit without making us any money. Though there absolutely is an argument to be made that we would have been better off just selling the cars that were sitting for six months. And in hindsight, that might have been the better decision, but it isn't what we did. And that really is the difficult part about recalls with no remedies is that you don't know when the vehicle is going to be fixed. And so it's really mentally difficult to come to terms about selling a car because you wonder, okay, if I sell the car tomorrow is next week, is this remedy going to be available? And this was absolutely the internal struggle that my husband HP and I had. We kept telling ourselves that we wanted to sell the three cars that were affected by recalls with no remedy, but then we kept getting worried that, okay, what if we sell the car tomorrow and the next week the remedy fix is available? We would have been so irritated at ourselves. And so this really prevented us from moving forward and selling the cars at all, which we never did. But it is a good idea, and I know that I will be doing this in the future, of laying out clear guidelines of what I will do if I'm hit with another recall with no remedy. How long will I keep a car for? What will I do with the car while it can be rented? And at what point will I just cut my losses and sell it? It's a good idea to have this thought out. Now, one question that I get asked quite often is if there is a recall with no remedy, there has to be a way to work around this. There has to be a way to still get this car listed on Turo. And unfortunately, like I mentioned earlier, at least to my knowledge, there is absolutely no way around this. This is not a Turo policy. It is just a legal requirement. And in my opinion, even if I knew of a way to get around this Turo policy, I personally wouldn't want to take the risk because I think liability wise, this would be a nightmare waiting to happen. So there you have it. Recalls with no remedies. This is absolutely an issue. And unfortunately, it's one that's almost completely out of our hands. If you want to learn more about starting and scaling a car sharing fleet, you can sign up for my course, the car sharing masterclass, and you can use the code offer 100 to get $100 off. The link is down in the description below. And like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.